What's going on, guys? Philip at Trade Genius. All right, we're going to take a look at the miners and the hash power and the strategy going into this May 2020 halving because I think you need to be aware of what's at play, how miners are likely going to play it, and what to expect after halving. All right, so let's dive into this video. Trade Genius. All right, guys, so price is trading just north of $7,000. The mining capitulation bands, as we talked about, has flipped back up, giving us a green light. We'll wait for the weekly to confirm that. But hash power has been making uh, all-time highs, and that's continuing to trend up. And as you can see, difficulty has flattened out. This is one of the longest periods where the Bitcoin mining difficulty has flatlined, and as such, uh, kind of goes hand in hand with the capitulation that we saw here, the hash bands or hash ribbons. But that being said, when the miners are making positive cash flow and the mining is profitable and they have plans to add more hash power to the network, they're going to do that before having and not after. So you want to make hay while you can, in other words, because once the halving happens, they're making half as many Bitcoins per block. They're, they're instantly, their profits potential gets cut in half. So if we take a look at the CoinShares latest report, the Bitcoin mining network trends, average creation costs, electricity consumption, and sources. This is a report they, they come out with. This is the latest edition, December 2019. They have some interesting data points. I'll bring your attention to these two graphs. Um, and basically the one on the left is what we want to concentrate on. So what they're doing is they're taking what the average market-wide cost is to mine. And they're looking at it where you have each color of the bands represents what, what it would cost if your electrical rate is one of these levels. So you got one cent per kilowatt hour all the way up to seven cents per kilowatt hour. So the median rate would be four cents per kilowatt hour. That takes us to this middle blue band. Then you have your depreciation costs. And depending on your system, if you got newer hardware, it's gonna last longer. The new mining hardware that's coming out is more efficient. So that's gonna extend out your depreciation costs. If you got older gear, then they're going to depreciate faster and in the end drive up your cost to mine. So if you take market-wide data, do some estimating, your median costs are going to be just north of $6,000 uh, market-wide. Okay, so right now, Bitcoin miners are making pretty decent chain. Now, that's not the whole story. In fact, they did some more research and dug into what would be the bare bones cash flow price per Bitcoin if they absolutely had to shut off machines. So in other words, you could mine at a loss under your ROI level for a while, and you could still maintain operations. But they did some more work, and they targeted market-wide average cash flow break-even level. So this would be where you absolutely have to shut off machines or you're going to start hemorrhaging cash. And again, it's a cross-section of electrical rates and operating expenditures. Uh, if you go into the median range of those, that's just under $3,900, almost four grand. So if you take the current cost of Bitcoin and you say this is their absolute bare bones where they would have to be shutting off machines is four grand market wide. Now for some, it's going to be higher and that's probably why we saw some of the hash rate reduction. But on average... Uh, if that's the case, then they can afford to add more hash now, hold back some of the Bitcoin they're mining, and save it up for when the halving happens. What that's going to do is that's going to affect price in a positive way because you're going to have supply being held back, which means the daily output's going to be less, which means it's going to affect supply and demand. So it has a positive effect on price. Assuming there's no external influences like uh, something like plus token dumping a whole bunch more coin on the market, which that seems to have subsided. So then you're going to have this upward trajectory. You're already going to have the psychological effect of buying into the halving. And so playing their cards right, they could see a bump up into halving. And when halving happens, they have all this Bitcoin they saved up out of the margin that they have to play with this 40% margin, right, to, that they could have held back some of their coin that they mined and then start deploying it post-having, and then you're gonna see a reduction in Bitcoin price post-having because now they're able to ease that slash in income due to the halving and the output being cut in half from the mining reward. So I think that's a strategy there that's in play, and what we need to do is keep an eye on this hash rate, and if that start, keeps grinding higher and higher, you can rest assured that that's probably the strategy in play. And as such, we would see these hash ribbons probably continue on this type of trajectory that we saw 
uh, on this run up. So you'd have these nice even space bands trending up. I think you see that. I think you're going to see that grind into having and then a post having relief where you got selling because of some of this built up extra inventory that's been held back to help buffer the reduction in income. So that's my theory on that. Let me know what you guys think. If you guys have a different theory, I'd love to hear it below in the comments. But something to keep an eye on. We have the ability to graph this stuff in TradingView to keep an eye on it. So let's all do that and see where this takes us. All right, guys, that's my thought on this video. Thanks for watching. Please hit like and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next video. Take care. Bye bye. Trade Genius.